Hey guys, uh, in Salt Lake City today, uh, we're going to be interviewing John Sonmez from Simple Programmer. We're going to be talking about uh, his upcoming book, how to get it for free, also his channel, what he's trying to do with it, his goals. And we're also going to be um, going into how to get your first web developer gig or uh, software gig um, after getting sort of education and without it and all the ways that he kind of suggests going, instead of going through the front door, going through the back door. Kind of like what I did with my channel a little bit. So uh, definitely enjoy this video and uh, don't forget to like and share it so we can do more in the future. All right, thanks for watching and uh, enjoy. Code everything. Uh, all right. Uh, so would you would you mind? I think uh, if I were to kind of give an introduction to you and your channel and everything, I might just go ahead and butcher it. So would you mind kind of introducing yourself and uh, your channel and everything? Sure. Yeah. So uh, so I'm John Sonmez. I run a channel called Simple Programmer, and and I've been trying to figure out like people always ask me what do I do, and I was at as I was at a, a SumoCon this weekend. I finally came up with there last weekend, and I say that I help software developers to be cool, <laughs> to learn how to be cool, and uh, and so really what my focus is is on personal development, like self development for software developers. And so kind of if you think about it, like most developers focus on the technical aspect of their lives, right? And they're really good at that. But all of the other areas tend to get missed a, a lot, right? And so I kind of focus now, I used to do a lot of technical stuff. I, I was a software developer for 15 years, but now I focus on all those other areas of your life from everything from fitness to relationships to finance to just motivation and mindset and achieving your goals so kind of you know i, I the way that i kind of joke is i say that i'm, I'm kind of like a one-third tony robbins one-third tim ferris and one-third bill gates like that's my makeup my mix my makeup i do personal development i do, do self-experimentation and uh, and of course i'm a programmer so Nice. Uh, that, that's really kind of important because as someone who is just recently looking through job apps till I found one, I couldn't believe how much was um, required in terms of communication. That was something they put a lot more attention to detail. It's like, look, you have to be able to function with people. If you don't have those skills, you can't really join the part of the team. And they're, they're uh, at least the people I were looking, I was applying to are more interested in like having someone they can work with and then teaching the skills to than having the skills and being hard to work with. So definitely, yeah. Actually, one of my subscribers told me that you you before you had a YouTube channel, you were kind of a blogger. Is that is that true? Yeah, I, I still blog. Actually, I still I still do one blog post a week. I'm actually writing a book right now. So what I'm doing is I'm giving the book away free on the blog. And so basically, a, a chapter comes out every single week. And then, you know, and I'm, I'm writing ahead of time and I'll finish the book before all the chapters get released. So people can go to the blog and they can sign up and get, you know, get a chapter every week delivered to them. And then when I release the full book, then I'll have probably the option to purchase it to say, okay, you know, I want to just get the whole thing now and have some other options there and some, probably some videos, stuff like that. Since, since I just finished video. And that, that's available on, on your website. Yeah. Yeah. Simpleprogrammer.com. If you go there, you can, there's, a, I think there's a pop up there. Actually, you know, it's simpleprogrammer.com forward slash career guide is the easiest way you can just sign up with your email and you get, you'll automatically start getting from chapter one and start getting all the chapters. Nice. And this is uh, your second book? Because I, I think I've seen that you, you've already written a book. Yeah. Yeah. This is my second one. So I, I wrote a, a book called Soft Skills, the Software Developer's Life Manual. And that ended up that ended up doing really well. I was surprised. Like it ended up being a bestseller. It's still selling really, really well. Especially the Audible version. Surprisingly, that was something that that I didn't expect. But that's actually out out selling the print. And that book is basically about about the, kind of the, all the things that I cover from career development to fitness, finance, all of that learning quickly, marketing yourself, building a brand, all the kind of core. You know, the way I describe the book is like. If I could go back in time, you know, 20 years and hand myself one book, what would I put in it? And that's what I created when I, when I wrote that book. And then, and then the new book that I'm working on is, is tentatively titled the, the Complete Software Developer's Career Guide. And so the idea there is like, okay, now let's just focus on the career aspect and let's just say, okay, if you like, what is all the stuff you need to know as a software developer, all the non-technical, the soft skills, like from 
how to get started, how to learn how to program to, all the way up to, you know, getting your first job, how to do interviews, how to negotiate your salary, how to compare contract versus salary, you know, rates. Cause they, you can't just take the number. It's not a simple multiplication and then how to like, you know, get the skills you need, how to work in your, in co with coworkers in your environment. And then finally how to like accelerate your career to the next level, give, you know, talks, presentations, start blogging, all that stuff. So it's kind of like the whole, <laughs> I'm trying to cover the whole gambit of like everything you might need to know. And so that's what, that's what I've been working on. And that's where all those blog posts are, are coming out from. So nice. I, I actually wish I read that before I accepted this job. I think I could have probably got more money in the, in the long term <laughs> if I did. It was, it's, uh, it's amazing how like, you know, just a simple like, I feel like a lot of times when you take a lot of these sort of uh, books that are advice or self-help or anything to kind of better yourself, even if you only get like two, three pieces of something that affect your life, they affect it so drastically that it, it really is like covers. It's just totally worth it in, in my opinion. So that's been my experience when I've read like um, Rich Dad, Poor Dad was a, a, a great example yeah. that kind of helped me get control of my finances to a degree and kind of get serious about life and I look forward to that. any any idea when uh, it's going to be be out in print version. I'm thinking probably Q1 of of 2017 because I'm about like I, it's a big book, right? It might be a two volume set. I think I'm about 110,000 words into it, Ooh. and it's going to be somewhere around 150 to 200,000 words. So I'm I'm finishing it up, and then I'll be going through the editing process. And I want to put together a nice package and have a kind of nice cover and just kind of make it a, a, a like a set that'll something that you could put on your desk and, and kind of be proud of it so that's that's kind of what i'm going for for this one so nice uh are you self-publishing or are you go working with a publisher for this i'm just curious yeah so i'm going to self-publish this nice. one the, there's you know there's definitely some pros and cons my first book soft skills was not self-published it's published through manning and manning's great i you know, don't have any complaints about manning but I believe now with my audience, you know, I've got maybe like uh, 38,000 subscribers on my, my email list. And that's, you know, so I can sell quite a few books. I've, I've got enough of a reach, I think, to be able to self-publish. And then with the success of the first book, that always helps because now I've got my fingers into Amazon. So if I publish a second book, even self-publish, like it's going to come up when you see the first book. And so, so I feel like I could, I could do well there. And then, you know, there's, I always leave the option. The way I thought about it too is, is I thought, okay, I self publish this thing. And then if a publisher comes up to me and they say, Hey, we'd like to, we, we'd like to publish it. That doesn't, you can self publish first and then you can pick up a publisher if you want and get even wider distribution. So I might as well like sell to my audience first and get, you know, not give away 90% of the profits. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and then later if I need more distribution and I, and I, and I can't, then, then, and then also you can go to a publisher and you can say, Hey, look, I've already sold 10,000 copies of this book. So you're going to have to give me a better deal. Whereas, you know, with my first book, I was at a great disadvantage because they're like, well, we don't know if the book's going to sell. Like, you know, I didn't have any negotiating power. So I, I feel like, self-publishing first is, you know, and I could be wrong, you know, I, I'm tested. I always find things out and, you know, I just take my best shot. And then if I fail, I fail and I learn. So. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you're doing that. Cause I, I have one or two friends who have kind of got picked up with book deals with publishers and it has just been not a pleasant experience at all. So I, I think, I think uh, it could have just been the publisher they're working with, but in terms of numbers, uh, as long as you can kind of put the upfront cost to, to buying, you know, inventory and things like that, and you have a market, yeah, self-publishing is probably the way to go. I, I, I don't know, though. I'm just talking out of my ass at the end of the day, just uh, from what I've heard. Well, you got options now. I mean, today we, we live in a time that is just awesome for entrepreneurs, right? Because you've got, you've got companies like CreateSpace, right, where you can publish books on demand. You can put your self-published book on Amazon. And through Create Space, it'll print on demand and ship to your customers. So you don't even have to hold inventory. You don't have to run do print runs. So there's there's a lot of really cool stuff that you can do. I think that that we that you couldn't do even five years ago. Yeah. Jump over to um, a little more software related. Um, you say you've been a developer for 15 years, and so uh, I'm not sure when you started, at what age you started learning code, but. Um, any sort of like anything you've noticed from when you originally started learning how to code compared to like, let's say someone wanted to start today, like 
how, how has that changed? Like, what is uh, the dynamic? Do you think of like 15, 20 years ago when you started to now, like what would, what would be some of the resources available then yeah. that maybe aren't and vice versa? You know, that's a great question. No one ever asked that question, but that is a really important question. And, and it, because it is, it's changed so much, right? So when I first started, when I, I was teaching myself, uh, there was really no internet. I mean, I, I started when I was like, uh, well, I guess it depends. Like I got my first professional job at like 19, but I started learning kind of 13, 14, you know, kind of teaching myself. And there were some books on C, <laughs> but there was, you can Google, you can find tutorials, you can find video courses, any of that stuff, right? You kind of had to figure it out. Like I spent a lot of time downloading source code and modifying it. And that's how I learned C <laughs> is that MUDs actually the multi-user dungeon. I download the source code and try to make my own and, and modifying it. And so, I mean, there are some books and some material, but it was hard to find. So finding actual material was, was much more difficult. And, and then the other thing that I think that, that really, really back then was it was all about like mastering the language. So I remember learning C++ and becoming an expert in C++ and it was the, the expertise was you knew all the nuances of the language and the standard libraries that, that went, went with it. So now if you contrast that today to, to today, right, there's so much more information and there's so much more you need to know. If you want to be a web developer today, you got to know JavaScript, you got to know HTML, CSS, you got to know some kind of JavaScript frangular, uh, framework, whether it be Angular or, you know, what, whatever you, you want there, Ember, or, you know, all kind, or maybe, and then on the server side, you got to know, maybe you're using Node or ASP. Like there's just so much to know. And so, and, and plus all the, the things you integrate with, right? It's the, you're going to be using libraries and frameworks and all this. So, so the shift has become really before, you know, 15 years ago or so, you could be a really good developer if you're an expert in the language. Today, the skill set is not expertise in the particular language, although you should still have a specialty, but it's the ability to quickly learn and to get the 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 grasp of the the larger picture to be able to put things together right and to be able to quickly pick up a framework and see how things integrate together it's it's to have more of a broad type of ability to to, to do things rather than that focused uh, language focused and then the other uh, major change here is that it's it's easier now right in well it's it's harder because there's more to know but it's easier to learn stuff because you can find tutorials i mean you know like your, your stuff on YouTube, right? Obviously. And, and there's a lot of YouTubers that are, are putting out free stuff. There's paid content like Pluralsight and Linda and Treehouse and, you know, and there's boot camps and there's tons of books and tutorials and blog posts. So you can find all this information. So, so I think that's, that's kind of the, the difference now is like a really good developer today is someone who can learn quickly and can find information quickly and, and put it together, right? They still have to have depth, like some kind of specialty I think is important, but it, it's a totally different world. Whereas before it was like, okay, you're a really good developer if you are an expert in one particular programming language and you know all the nuances of it. And it was harder to, to do that, but there was less to know overall. So it is definitely, definitely a different, different environment. Yeah, I, I tend to agree, especially about the learn, being able to learn quickly and learn new things, um, especially like I, I've always thought that. And then I started getting some like uh, applications in which they would have coding challenges and the coding challenges would not even be in the languages that you'd be working with. They're like, we want you to do this in Python, OCaml and Rust. I was like, OK, uh, but isn't this a JavaScript related role? And they're like, yes, we just want to see if you can do it in these languages that you've never touched before. Okay. Yeah. And so that, that I think that's really what they're looking for more than anything else. It's like, how, can, how well can you adapt? And assuming that hey, it takes you three months to learn our stack. Cool. Well, you know, here you go. There's three months to play around. <laughs> but uh, we, you, you got to make sure you know how to learn before you can kind of jump in. Exactly. Yeah. What's the most important skill, you know, for software developer? I do, I do a talk on this and, and, you know, it's, it's not the most exciting skill, but honestly, the most important skill is, is the ability to teach yourself is, is to learn. That's, and it's probably the most important skill you'll have in your life, because if you can teach yourself, if you can self-educate, what can't you do? Like the whole world opens up to you if you can do that one thing. And it's, it's surprisingly difficult. Most people have difficulty teaching themselves. They have to go somewhere and someone has to teach them. You know, they, they, they don't take responsibility for their own education is, is what I'd say. 
so um, I've, I always uh, seem to get asked this question, and I'll ask it as well. What's your opinion about coding boot camps versus traditional like CS degree? So yeah, this is a good one, and I, and I actually like the some of the first few chapters in my book. I I cover the three eyes. Like I, I have a chapter today, kid to boot camp, one to college, and then one to just total self self taught education. And I, you know, as I was writing those chapters, actually, and I was researching, I I became more and more convinced that boot camp makes the most sense in 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 many cases, right? And and the reason why is because it's like, you know, boot camps necessarily. Well, a lot of people get get upset. A lot of a lot of old timers, like the old guard programmers, they say, "Well, oh, boot camp, oh, you can't learn how to code in three months." These guys, they're 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 doing a disservice. They're just like you know, learning the basics, and then they're going out into the world and they're writing the scrap code. I, I kind of disagree. It's like you know, today we work at very high levels of abstraction, and you can learn the basics if you're dedicated, if you're willing to work hard, if you have a good you know good system for, for learning, you can learn how to write an application. You know, I, I just did this video that was uh, very, very passionate about like I could learn anything in three months because some people were, were doubting this. And, and I think that's, you know, that's the thing is like, if you're willing to put in the work, a boot camp gives you the ability to to really maximize your results in a short period of time. And it's focused on what you, you know, the, traditional education has this big problem today, which is that it still lives in a world where we are, we're generalists. Being a generalist is, is valuable. And that's not the world we live in today. Today, we are specialists. Today, being a specialist is really important. Being well-rounded does in, in an education sense doesn't make any sense. And so I think that's kind of the weakness of college. Now, some colleges and decree, Degree, uh, degree programs are are fixing that, but a boot camp is focused on specifically what you what you are trying to learn and what you want to do, and so I, I like that approach. And I think that you know there is some merit to saying that okay, if you get an education in how to program and you go through like a twelve week or three month boot camp, that that's not enough. And and I agree, but it's enough to get you started and get you in the real world working and to actually be productive and to add value to a customer. And then you, your education doesn't stop. Now you're learning on the job, but then you got to go back. And I think learning some of the, the things that you would learn in traditional CS becomes valuable, but you can do that. You don't need to pay you know a whole bunch of money, go into debt and spend four years of your life in order to do that. If you're driven and you're getting paid because you get a job you know, quickly from, from a boot camp, you can go back and then you can go and learn that stuff on your own. And that, and that will, you know, you still got to keep learning as, as a developer, but, but I feel like a boot camp is just, it, and it, it just economically makes sense. Time-wise it makes sense. And because it's focused on specifically what you're on the application, as opposed to theoretical and academic pursuits, it, to me, you know, as long as you find the right one and you're willing to work hard, it, it, it seems like the best path. I just can't see why, you know, someone would really like say another path is, is so much better. Yeah, so. I, I think I think it's more so just outdated thing. I, I tend to agree with the boot camp, but uh, I it's one of those things I think you get as much out of it as you put into it. Um, there's definitely probably quite a few people who go to boot camps and just never do anything with software because they just think they're going to go for three months, get like a $80,000 starting salary and like not have to work after that. Uh, but that goes back to the whole, like always being willing to learn and always, you know, kind of being self-taught. Like, I think, I think you do the boot camp, you start working and continue to prove your skills. So, yeah. Um, well, and you know, the thing I tell people with boot camp is I say, okay, don't even go to boot camp if you're not if you're not absolutely determined to be within the top 10 percentile of the of the graduates in your boot camp because if you're in the top 10 percent you're going to get a job like you're going to get a good job because you know because people say well not everyone who goes to a boot camp gets a job yeah i totally agree but if you're in the top 10 percent i guarantee you that any boot camp that survives they're at least getting placements for the top 10% of, of people, right? It's probably should be top 50, but, but let's, you know, if, if you don't have the drive and motivation and, and work ethic that you're going to try to be one of the top 10%, I'm not saying the top person, maybe, you know, that, that might be hard, but the top 10%, if you don't have that, then don't do it. Then, you know, you're, you're wasting your money, your time. It's not, it's like you said, it's not like you just show up 
it, but the same, but people apply the same thing to college, right? A lot of people say, okay, well, um, I jumped through all the hoops. I got my CS degree, I got my four-year degree. So where's my job, dude? And you're like, well, hold on a second. I think you missed the, <laughs> just cause you did <laughs> the, just cause you've got a degree, you're not entitled to get a job. It doesn't, it doesn't work that way. It's like, what value can you contribute to society or to a business? That's how the world works. That's how economics works. And so whether you learned it, the skills yourself, whether you went to a boot camp, whether you got a degree, it was up to you to learn, first of all, and then second, to actually have that learning result in some kind of value that you can now provide. And so if you jump through all the hoops and you went to a boot camp or you went to a four year degree and you didn't learn, and you can't provide value, well, I'm sorry. Like, you know, you, you're not entitled to just get it just because you, you did it. And that's, I think that's, it's a really difficult mentality to shake out of people's heads, but it's very prevalent today. And that's scary, I, I think. You know, uh, if you could give like one or three, whatever amount of advice <laughs> that you would like in terms of people who have gone through the hoops, the boot camps, the, the degrees, they, what would be the things that you kind of recommend for them to do or kind of, um, create in order to actually get their foot in the door and get hired. Uh, that seems to be something that people are having trouble with. They're getting a little discouraged. They're applying all the time. They think they're ready to you know, get that first developer job, but for whatever reason, it's not clicking. Yes, this is a, this is a big problem. And it's interesting. I just recorded a video on this because people complain. Well, companies complain. They say we can't find any developers. And then all these developers, young developers, or sometimes old developers too, they say, wait a minute, hold on. Are you guys crazy? There's so many of us, like I, I, I want a job, like I can write code. And so what's, what's the disconnect here, right? And so, so the problem is, is really related to the, the fact that, you know, companies want to hire the top developers, experienced developers. And, and so when you, how do you get your foot in the door, right? Just, just like mm -hmm. you said. So I think there's a, there's a few different things. The first piece of advice I would say is do not go in the front door. Okay. Go around the back door, figure out, do not. And what I mean by the front door is do not go through the standard, go to monster.com or hire.com or, you know, whatever the job search site is and just drop a resume in there and expect to get a job and, and you know, send out 5,000 resumes. That's, that's not a good plan. So you want to figure out, you want to figure out some other way to get in. So I'll give you an example to, just to make this a little bit concrete. So I was at a, a user group and I was given a talk and this guy comes up to me and he says, Hey, I want to get a job as a remote developer. And he said, uh, you know, since you're here, <laughs> can I pick your brain? Can I get some help on this? And, and so I said, well, tell me more. And he said, well, you know, I'm really experienced in, in ASP.NET. I know all this stuff. I've been programming for 10 years, but I've never been able to get a remote development job. I've applied for a lot of them, but there's a lot of competition, like you said. And so how can, how can I do this? What, what, what could I do? He said, I'm really good at, at talking to people and, you know, communications. So I said, okay, well, what if you did this? I don't think there's a podcast called the remote developer podcast. I think a lot of people are interested in remote development. I don't think there's a podcast dedicated. What if you created a podcast, you know, it's called remote developer podcast or something like that. And you interviewed a bunch of remote developers, you know, about their lives, about the struggles, how they got their jobs, all that. And you actually called some companies that had remote teams and you, and you said to those companies, Hey, do you have any developers that would be good for my podcast? I am the host of a, a podcast dedicated to remote developers. And I know you have a remote distributed team and I've heard good things about your company, right? And then, and then what's going to happen there is a couple of things. One, you're going to become an authority, <laughs> but by virtue of being the host of the remote developer podcast Two, you're going to make connections with all these companies in, in an indirect way, instead of banging on their door and saying, Hey, could you give me a job? You're going to be coming in from a position of, of almost authority, right? You're, or at least at the peer level, like we're, I'm, I'm looking for, uh, for developers from your company to, to interview. And so now you're going to create all these connections. And so guess what happens when they have a, a remote job opening? They're going to be like, well, should we hire the guy that's interviewed like 50 remote developers and, and is an expert on, I think he'll probably be a good hire, right? You see what I'm saying? Like you'll have all these connections. I think there you go. And that's an example. I mean, that's just one example, but that's how you don't go in the front door. That's how you go around the back or around the side door is you figure out these ways. And sometimes it's just like noticing that this company 
that has all these developers that you want to work for, they all, they all go to coffee at 10 a.m. at some spot. Well, go hang out there with your laptop, right? And go strike up conversations. And, you know, I mean, it takes some work and stuff, but think outside the box. Think of ways that you're going to build relationships, that you're going to get opportunities that are going to, that, that the HR person, you know, I, I heard this great story. This, I was at a conference and this, this guy was, was, was telling me that he had, he had tried to get this, this guy a job and he had, that was a developer friend of, of his and he had, put in his resume and or the guy submitted for the job and he never heard back and it was a perfect match and he went to HR and said well what what happened and the HR person said well you see um, on his resume you, the programming language that this job is for he listed it as the as as the eighth skill <laughs> so we so I threw his resume out so, I'm like, so he was like, what? Wait a minute. How do you know that he doesn't know all eight of those programming languages equally? Like, this is ridiculous. Like, call him up, right? And so the point there is like, HR person, you know, no offense to HR people, but they're stupid. They don't know technology, right? They're going to like filter based on keywords. They're like, you need to have 10 years of experience in a, in a programming language that came out yesterday. Like it's, you know, th this is the, the, so you cannot go through, you got to avoid these gatekeepers. And so you got to think of ways to do this. How can you, and that's why I always emphasize for developers to market themselves, to build a personal brand, get a blog out there. Right. You know what I mean? First thing that someone does when they, when you apply for a job, I guarantee you what it, what, what they do is they Google your name. And if your blog comes up and you claim to be an iOS developer, but your blog is like, you know, two years old and you haven't posted anything on it. Uh, you know, but if you've been posting every week and you have all these great articles on iOS development, they sit there and you get an interview before the interview because they'll sit there for an hour and read your stuff. And they've already decided to hire you before you've even come in for the interview. They're just going to ch check to make sure you're not a psychomaniac at the interview. And that one is easy to pass for most people, right? So you got to figure out, you know, if you want to get your foot in the door, you know, figure out how to go around, you know, and, and it could be, like I said, some of the techniques, but you know, some practical things are that every, everyone can do is to create a blog, keep that updated, you know, build your personal brand and your, in, in your, your uh, marketing for, for yourself and, and do things like get a, get a portfolio, right? You know, put four Android apps in the app store. If you want to be an Android developer, so then you can say, look, I can actually write code and I publish it. You know, try to figure out, you know, think, think in terms of the employer, what would they want? What would be something that would just knock their socks off that they'd be like, okay, I got to hire this person. Right. And, 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 and then I'll, I'll give one last piece. I'm going on a little bit of a diatribe, but uh, be persistent as hell. Like, you cannot be too persistent, right? Just keep on knocking. There's a, I read, you know, if you read sales books, one of the things that they say is like, you know, the, the difference between the salesperson who makes $300,000 a year and the person who makes $60,000 a year is the $60,000 a year person, they only call, they only uh, call eight times. But the $300,000 a year person, they call 13 to 14 on average. So, you just keep on knocking. You just keep on being annoying, you know, you do it in a polite way, but keep on knocking. Say, Hey, what about now? Do you have a job for me now? You know, what can I do? What can, you know, and you, you keep on going until you get it because it, it works. The squeaky wheel gets the, gets the grease. So I definitely like the marketing aspect. I don't think it's something people do that. Um, I'm, I'm sure, uh, you know, if they watch some of your videos, they can get quite a few ideas of how to proceed with that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you're a perfect example, right? I mean, like, just like, if you think about it, if, you, if, if, if I'm thinking about hiring you for a job, right. And I go and I Google your name and I'm like, Oh, that's interesting. You have a YouTube channel. I started watching your videos and I'm like, Oh, that's interesting. So this guy's actually teaching. So then another thing clicks in my head. I'm like, huh, if I hire this guy, he's going to help make my whole team better. Cause he, he, you can't stop him from teaching because he's going to teach. Right. And that's, then I'm like, okay, now this, you know, it's like, you, you've just moved up a few levels and, 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 and plus, I mean, you know, having your name out there, like is just, it, it's a powerful concept. You, you have this, you can create these mini celebrity effects and it doesn't take a lot, right. In, in order to do that as, as, as you've probably noticed, right. It, yeah. It, it's, it helps. it's, it's been, it's been an interesting thing. Cause I never really thought YouTube would ever help me get a, a developer job. Uh, but it, it has. And so <laughs> yeah. it's like, Oh, that's great. Thanks guys.
you know, come check me out on my channel, you know, come over and subscribe. And, you know, I've got a lot of content, like you said, two, two to three videos a day, typically on all kinds of stuff, personal development, career, you know, all that stuff. I have a lot of fun there. And then, and then if you're interested in the book, of course, uh, soft, simpleprogrammer.com forward slash career guide. And you can get, you know, like I said, you can get it for free. If, uh, when it comes out, uh, you, if you're on that email list, you, you'll, you'll be the first to know if you want to buy a, a hard copy or I'll, I'll do an audible version as well. So, yeah. Thanks for watching the video. Special thanks to our sponsor, Dev Mountain. Definitely check them out at devmountain.com. If you're looking for a boot camp that's in front end development, iOS or UX, go ahead and give them a shot. Tuition includes housing so you can get up and go and fully immerse yourself in the program. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.